Cringe. It's a word that's changed a lot over the years. It used to just mean a physical reaction to something uncomfortable, but today, for many, it's about witnessing something so bizarre that you have no other choice but to say, I duck cringe. So, with that little etymology lesson out of the way from Papa Boone, let's dive into a tiny little indie show I covered in my last video, Has Been Hotel. And yeah, that video blew up, with some of you really getting heated in the comments. So there was no way I was going to pass up talking about this show again. Now, despite what some of those commenters might think, I don't actually hate Has Been Hotel or its fans. Every show has its share of toxic and strange fandoms, and you can't really avoid it. As an avid fan of Smiling Friends, we are not even excluded from from that. Just look at any number of Smiling Friends fans that spam Zach would find this cringe when referring to has been or any gay fan arts. When the dude quite literally along with Michael worked with Viv Z on Hell of a Bus and are friends with her, along with having gay friends themselves. So yeah, no fan base is immune to cringe. However, Has Been Hotel is a particularly contentious series, even though it has its decent reviews online. So I'm here to dive into why that is and debunk some of the more common comments I saw in my last video. But don't worry, this isn't a let's dunk on Has Been video. There are plenty of those out there, and honestly, it's like beating a dead horse at this point. But I'm not going to go easy on the show either. Just a quick reminder to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and ding that bell. It's a quick and easy click for you, but it means the world to Mr. Boone, who thanks to you all has reached 3,000 subscribers. Now let's get back to the video. So to begin with, if you want to criticize the show, there are many ways to do so. Just to name a couple of obvious ones, to start with, all the characters feel a little too similar visually. Another critique would be that the lore and world building, being set in hell and heaven, is actually kind of interesting, but it ultimately leads nowhere. This could have led to some pretty intriguing takes on the not-so-benevolent gods and goddesses of heaven, but instead it mostly just acts as window dressing, serving the purpose of being something done for for the sake of, it just look cool, dude. Which, hey, I can't really fault Vivzy for doing, because that's basically the rule of cool that Anno followed when creating Evangelion. And let's be honest here, do you really think he cared about the biblical relevance of any of the references in Ava? Hell no, that shit just looked cool as hell. Even if it hilariously, ironically got some Japanese people into reading the Bible, that was never the point of the series. Additionally, the show is primarily a drama for adults. Note that MA rating, kiddos. But, I mean, uh, who am I kidding? When I was a teenager, I watched Elf and Lied in 320p on YouTube, as God intended that awful series to be watched. But in spite of it being a drama for adults, much of that drama is actually undercut by aggressive amounts of swearing and sex jokes, which hey, it's not the end of the world. It's set in hell after all. But they could have eased up on it just a little bit, especially when trauma is often the topic of discussion in the show. Not to say that you can't have shows or movies that have swear words and sex jokes and involve trauma, but you need to kind of balance that nicely, or else the show's drama won't actually land properly as intended. That said, there still are some pretty impactful moments of drama in the show, but it's mostly ruined by something that has unfortunately plagued plenty of adult animated series these days. Eight episode seasons. While this works for shows like Smiling Friends because it's basically just a dumb comedy that follows bite-sized stories, Hasbin insists on itself being taken seriously. But much of that is crammed into only eight episodes, so it often comes off as rushed. So this paired with the bad timing of jokes and overabundance of swearing doesn't make for a very compelling story to some. So with that genuine criticism out of the way, let's address how not to criticize the series. But has unfortunately been what I see almost all all the time when looking at my comments on the video I posted. One reason I saw cited in the comments is almost too absurd to believe, but they say the show is cringe because it was written by a woman. This idea is up there with those outdated boomer memes where the humor at the end of the day is just women suck, including their wives. I don't know why this was a popular joke for boomers, but it just happens to be for some reason. That said though, the idea that women can't be funny is just plain wrong. Seriously, Philomena Kunk never fails to make me keel over laughing. And plenty of women have created shows that absolutely slap, so you can't fault them for writing. You don't have to look any further than Dungeon Meshi, Doro Hey Doro, Ririn. And for those of you who think that Japanese media doesn't count, let's talk about American Psycho. The movie, not the book, was directed by Mary Heron, and it's a Sigma favorite as you know. That's also not to forget about Catherine Bigelow, and many other directors that are also women. So yeah, the idea that has been is cringe just because it was written by a woman, that's just you being a goober, man. No number of 
of Wojak memes you can post to prove yourself right on that. Another reason I saw, and this is pretty much all over the comments, is that the show is cringe because of gay representation. Honestly, this is just upsetting. We live in a time where femboys are normalized in memes, but a character being into the same sex in a show, well, that's just a problem. The number of beloved shows with gay characters makes this argument incredibly off base. I mean, a lot of my channel is focused on smiling friends, and there's one thing I know damn well. It's that the show has some incredibly homoerotic undertones. You may say they're jokes, but they are there, and I don't think they're meant to be fully taken as just jokes. I don't think Zack has ever been the kind of guy to just go, haha, it's funny because they're gay. There are just far too many scenes of Charlie low-key, high-key hitting on every other male character for it to be untrue that he's potentially bisexual. And since Zack and Michael aren't 15-year-olds on the internet, they have most definitely had gay or bisexual friends close to them. As a 31-year-old myself, my best friend from childhood ended up being bisexual and he was the most straightest guy I've ever known in my life. So it's really not a stretch to believe that Charlie could be. So once again, just because the show has gay characters doesn't instantly make it cringe. Hell, Owl House has plenty of gay characters, including the lead, and it's still adored, even if cancelled by Disney. Sure, a few kids who never watched it might say it's lame because of the two leads kissing, but did they ever watch the rest of the show? Or did they just see a snippet and immediately freak out? There are some banger moments in terms of animation, and fights, so this criticism is just stupid. Much of the hate for the series typically boils down to somebody committing to the bit and saying something homophobic and just leaving it at that, as if it's some sort of valid criticism. So, what's the real reason Hasbun Hotel is perceived as cringe? I think it really comes down to the way it gained recognition, for all the wrong reasons, actually. Unlike Owl House, which remains relatively niche and peaceful, Hasbun blew up like the Amazing Digital Circus, but while the Amazing Digital Circus kept its swearing at a minimum, in fact, I think they actually censor most of it as a joke, has been spammed it and was the first impression of the show that I had along with others, which wasn't exactly a good one. Plus, has been is a musical, which in my opinion are often unfairly disliked. The show takes itself incredibly seriously, but lacks the self-awareness to balance its humor with its serious tone. It feels like they're trying a little bit too hard to be rated R with all the swearing and sex jokes, only to take a sharp U-turn into dark themes of trauma. Ultimately, has been Hotel isn't an objective bad show, but its perception online has led to many to think otherwise. It's a show filled with bizarre writing decisions, overly complicated design choices, and total shifts that feel like they were written by someone lacking self-awareness. It's a show that even its fans think could have improved its delivery. So because of all of this, it's amplified in popularity and has basically become this era's My Little Pony for adults. And hey, even if it's cringe, to be cringe is to be free, my friends. Never forget that and you'll be all right in life.